Hi, my name is Adrian. Welcome to this channel. And in this video, let's talk about photography and cycling. Let's roll. So if you're an avid photographer and a cyclist as well, you may find that the two hobbies don't really mix very well with each other. The reason for that? Well, typically, if you want the best image quality, you're going to go for, let's say, an interchangeable lens camera. And typically, those have fairly large sensors. And in the problem on the cycling part, you are really limited to, well, the kind of stuff that you can carry. So, unless you're on some kind of uh, bike packing or loaded touring kind of scenario, you probably won't be wanting to carry something like this with you. Uh, this is a very good interchangeable lens camera and this is just one lens, it's a standard zoom. You probably also maybe want to pack an ultra wide for landscapes as well as maybe a telephoto for longer shots and portraits as well. So yeah, you probably don't want to carry all this with you on your bike. Except of course the loaded touring or bikepacking scenario that I mentioned. But even then, that's a lot of weight and weight and bulk. So if you're willing to make the sacrifice, sure you're gonna get great shots, you're gonna get great video with something like this. But I suspect most people probably not want to use something like this. So what can you do if you want great image quality or great video but can't afford the weight and bulk? Well, it, this depends a lot on the kind of uh, video or the kind of photos that you're going after. If you want to like go for those uh, travel kind of videos, you know, travel videos or travel photography, then image quality would be very important. So one thing you can go for is a sort of category of uh, cameras that are typically called uh, large sensor compact cameras. And the, currently the most popular models in this kind of category is the Sony RX100 series. This comes with a one inch tight sensor. There are a couple of uh, different uh, cameras like this from different brands including Canon that and even Panasonic that are like this. So the Sony is just an example. But look at it. It's small, but it can give you very good image quality as well as very good video. This even does a 4K video as well. And it's in such a small little package. You can just slip it into your rear jersey pocket or any little bag on your, on your bicycle. And to protect it, you can even get a, a waterproof case and it slips in very easily including additional space for a spare battery or memory cards too. So this is a great option for travel type uh, videos and pictures. But yeah, if you are into action, then this may not be that uh, suitable because it's a bit fragile you don't want to drop it ever you don't want to really get it wet so in those situations your options would be the action camera so the two most uh, popular cat uh, brands in this category would be GoPros Sony although Sony is kind of uh, outdated currently who knows when they're going to update it with a new model and of course a lot of uh, cheaper brands like uh, DJI, uh, SJ Cam, and I don't know. But basically, action cameras in this category are very small and light. They are designed purely for video. So if you are after photography, well, they can take pictures, but the amount of settings as well as options like zoom and all that is very limited so they are purely 
uh, action video oriented. Why are they so suitable for action? Well, most of them are rugged. You can accidentally drop them and they probably can take the beating. And they have a variety of mounting options. You can mount these on your helmet, on your bicycle handlebar, on the bicycle seat for you know rear action videos and you know you can just hold them out although of course it, when you're holding something and cycling at the same time you have to be careful and uh, you know make sure that it is perfectly safe to actually hold it so yeah that kind of covers it in terms of photography and videography as well as action but you know what if you just want something for the memory or you know you just want a picture for Strava or uh, for social media well in that case you always have your mobile phone and don't get me wrong uh, modern mobile phones have actually improved quite a lot in fact they are even displacing most uh, compact cameras in terms of photography reason being uh, image quality has improved significantly over the years and nowadays you even get high-end smartphones that have some level of optical zoom so in many ways a smartphone can actually replace your typical small-ish compact camera when it comes to photography and a lot of them even do 4k videos you know that's amazing in such a small little thing so of course, image quality wise, you are not going to be able to compare with higher end compacts with those one inch type sensors or larger. And definitely, they're not going to compare with interchangeable lens cameras. But, you know, a smartphone is something that you practically have with you all the time. So, why not make full use of it? The only worry about this is probably smartphones are fragile and you also use it for other uh, well it serves other purposes you know it could be a navigation device it could be your emergency uh, device for you know calling for help so battery life is limited you may want to conserve battery so there are reasons why you don't want to use your smartphone purely for photography for, I mean <laughs> purely for photography and videography but well, it is a very good option if and when you can use it. So with that, uh, there are a couple of categories that I have uh, kind of neglected. One of them is the tough camera category. Now, these kind of cameras are designed to be super tough, waterproof. But the problem is a lot of these cameras still use very small sensors. So, in terms of image quality, a lot of modern smartphones have already surpassed them. The only thing they, are, they still hold a candle against is probably uh, in the zoom department because this one still has good optical zoom as well as the toughness, you know? Like for example, this tough camera is like waterproof up to up to i don't know it's not listed here ah there it is waterproof up to 15 meters or 50 feet and shockproof up to 2.1 meters or 7 feet so well you can make a case for tough cameras if let's say you're going somewhere extreme that really needs the protection of this that these kind of cameras uh, offer like for example if you want to go to the beach or waterfall and these can easily survive a dip under the water and, and I know nowadays there are smartphones that are actually IP67 or even IP68 rated but seriously despite all the, the, the advanced you know ratings for the phone are you sure you want to risk your expensive smartphone you know, in case maybe the waterproofing fails or whatever, are you sure you really want to risk this? Compared to, you know, bringing a cheaper and more suitable device for underwater and, you know, 
rugged extreme conditions. So yeah, that's probably the only argument I can think of for these categories of uh, cameras. And you know, the, the cool thing about this Olympus, this particular model, the Olympus TG 870 is it's one of the rare few uh, compacts with a flip screen so you can still you know take selfies and whatever with them <laughs> there's one more category that I have neglected to mention that is um, large sensor um, fixed lens cameras such as for example the Leica Q or the Fuji X100 or the Sony RX1 uh, series what else are there? Um, the Ricoh, Ricoh, Ricoh or Ricoh or whatever GR series those come with large sensors larger than one, one inch type they're actually practically the same size as I mean the same size sensor as what you may find in a typical DSLR camera so they give you very good image quality but they are niche products and in terms of size and weight I'll actually put them closer to interchangeable interchangeable lens cameras as far as cycling is concerned I know some people may argue your your Fuji X100 isn't actually that big you can actually carry it in a pocket but in the context of cycling it's still big and bulky so they are kind of niche if you want to bring those around uh, sure why not but there are better options than those in the context of cycling so in the end there isn't really one best camera for photography and videography in cycling it's more what you want to achieve and how much you are willing to sacrifice in order to achieve whatever amount of uh, level of quality that you are after some people may be fine with the quality that they get from a smartphone some people really want the best that they can get but of course when it comes to the best carrying a big and bulky thing like that may not be the most optimal thing on a bike so the next best is of course the small sensor compact sorry the large sensor compact small sensor compacts are out nowadays you know smartphones have already surpassed them so let's forget about that category so with that said uh, I hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching uh, leave a like and subscribe if you do and finally and if you do any sort of uh, photography or videography while cycling, you know, let me know down in your comments below. I'll be interested to see what kind of things you do, you do with your photography and videography. Okay, and having said that, bye.